In this lesson, we'll begin applying some reds to our character's skirt. All right, great. So I've gone ahead and thickened up those lines that we worked on in the previous lesson, and we're ready to go ahead and start adding in some reds. Now, I've gone ahead and selected a few different reds here that we can utilize as we're rendering out her skirt. Now, um, we're going to start with this peach color, but this is the green that we utilized. Watch what happens when I go over that green with this peach. Not much. Uh, that green doesn't change in value really at all. But let me go, go ahead and show you what happens when I go over it with this prawn color you'll notice that the green is changing. So what we're going to do is we're going to rely on the reds to darken the stripes in our skirt everywhere but where they intersect. So um, let me show you kind of what, what I mean. I'm going to come in here and I've also come in on my shadows and highlights layer and I've kind of planned out some areas where I want the pink to be. So I'm going to come in and kind of begin bringing in the highlights. Again, working light to dark. just like so. I might shrink my brush down a little bit with the bracket keys. Come in and maybe hit a little one right here. And we have some up here, kind of along her waistband. And we'll just make that a bit larger. Come over here, hit one right about here. So thinking about the light source that we've been utilizing throughout this course, uh, the light source is kind of above and in front of our character here. So um, that's where these highlights would naturally hit. Uh, so we're going to go with that. So let's come over here at this point and grab our next red in line. Now uh, watch what happens again when we start to go over that green with this red. Now it doesn't happen until you go over it a few times, but you can see here how it's beginning to darken that up. Now, again, we determined that the pink really doesn't do a whole lot to it. So uh, if we wanted to kind of bring in the pink in a little lighter tone with maybe just a single stroke or two, we could do that. Just sort of like so. Just working kind of quickly at this point. Now when we start coming in with that red, we need to be careful that we don't go over where those green lines intersect. We also want to be careful that we don't just obliterate the pinks that we've laid down as well. So um, if I come in here like so, we also want to be able to sort of blend the pinks into the reds. Now up here it doesn't matter. We can actually start to kind of go over those green stripes some. But when I get down to here, I want to be able to make a distinct little block right there. So let's shrink down our brush if we need to. Make a nice little square. Just sort of like that. And there we go. There we've got our lighter green square. Now this is going to be a little bit of a challenge uh, where the pink is lying. So we might want to be really careful in kind of framing that intersection when the pink borders one side of the green line. But you know we can always come in and blend things together if we need to. All right, great. I'm actually going to come in with this red and kind of run it down uh, this this fold because I know that's going to end up being darker with a, a shadow collecting in there. And I'm just going to kind of come up here. Paying attention to where I've laid my pink down. Now, when we start to blend things together, we're going to have to be really, really careful. So uh, let me show you what I mean. We're going to come in here and select our colorless blender. And let's shrink our brush down and start to blend in this area right here. We don't want to blend the green because obviously the green we want to remain intact. So we can blend around the green. Yeah, no problem. It's, uh, it's going to work fine. But the minute we start blending that green, we're going to start blurring the line into the red. And we don't want to do that. So um, we'll just rely again on our red color. 
And again, in this particular instance, we need to go over that stripe. So I'll just kind of bring that red in just like so. I'm going to go around these pink areas uh, kind of carefully here so we don't just obliterate them. You can already see I've kind of gotten into that one a little bit, but hopefully we'll be able to blend that out. Now, the areas here in the green stripes, we still want to go over, despite the fact that they're kind of crossing over the highlights. Remember, we're wanting to make those uh, areas this darker green, except for that intersection. So I'm going to come down here and just hit right in there really good. And we're going to start to come in here. Again, I'm alternating the size of my marker so that we can get uh, a nice big stroke in areas and a, a smaller stroke in other areas. But knowing that that pink is highlight, I don't want to go over that. So this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. I'm going to come in here just like so. Now, just like with other areas on this uh, on this character, we're going to come in and we're going to blend um, or erase around the, the perimeter just to uh, make sure that we clean it up nice uh, nicely before we call it finished. But just pay attention to what you're coloring red and why you're coloring it that red. So um, I'm going to just come in here like so, start to kind of work my way between these highlights right here. Now, if you need to shrink your, your marker down fairly small to get these little uh, uh, squares to pop, then by all means do that. Uh, for example, if I come in here just like so, kind of frame that little overlapping area. Do the same thing up here. Because remember, that's part of the design. That's part of the pattern. I mean, if this was an opaque media, we could always come in on top with that green, but it's not. We don't have that luxury with markers. So, again, working with the, the transparent nature of the uh, media, uh, we need to figure out some alternate routes to do certain things. And this is, uh, this is one of those things. I'm just going to come in here and hit that area again. I'm also going to hit over here a little bit more. All right, fantastic. So uh, we're starting to look pretty good. We've made our way about halfway around the skirt here. I'm going to continue just kind of coming in and try not to get in too big of a hurry because um, it's when you get in a hurry that you'll do something like go over one of those intersections. And uh, Sketchbook Pro does have a limited number of undos, so um, you may end up having to erase that if you, uh, un if you went too far before you realized what you'd done. So uh, be really mindful. Come in again if you need to with the pink. Now th this particular material is one that the reflections are going to be rather uh, rather diffused because it's, it's a fabric and it's not uh, a sheer fabric. So uh, keep that in mind. We're going to want to come in and, and, and soften these highlights up so that they're really kind of spreading out around the fabric. Come in here and just hit that green line there, as well as this one over here. Just like so. All right, so that's starting to look pretty good. Um, we've made our way uh, about halfway around uh, the the skirt here. And we've really only used two different shades of red, which uh, is all you should be worried about at first. 
And don't worry about coming in and adding in deeper reds or even purples for the shadows. We're going to do that yet, even yet. So um, go ahead and finish working on these two colors of the skirt, this pink and this red. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing uh, in between lessons. And when you come back in the next lesson, we're going to start incorporating even darker values in to uh, bring in some shadows. So we'll do that in the next lesson.